All right. I figure about 11 o'clock, some more faces will show up. Didn't, or people who forgot to set their clocks. Thankfully, we have all these devices now that switch on automatically. And that certainly does help. But I'll tell you, isn't it amazing how one hour messes with you? Oh, man. And then if you had anything that happened last night that you got to bed a little later than what you anticipated, anyone know what I'm talking about? Oh, man. And then your kids are off cycle and stuff. My goodness. Cindy and I were at the church office because we couldn't find something last night. So uh, it was it was a little later last night than what we would have liked to have been in bed. <clears throat> Must be breathing, right? We all are walking through stuff. Well, listen, we've been we've been hitting courage really hard, and um, just recognizing that if we will push past things, okay, if we will push past obstacles, because we recognize that the Lord is with us, that God has plans and purposes for your life. He wants to use you. Do you believe it? I mean, we all walk through times when we're just numb. You know what I'm talking about? You know, when uh, no one has to go searching for any zombies because you're one of them? <laughs> okay, I mean, you're, you just, you're kind of numb to things that are going on. And it could be because of circumstances you walk through. It could be that you're walking through a dry time where you just don't seem to, to hear God's voice. And I'm encouraging you, lean into that. Okay, lean into that because there's lessons that God wants to teach you through that. Sometimes those dry times that we have in our life, sometimes those heavy temptation periods of our life are times where, the, where God just wants to test our heart. He wants us to lean into Him. He wants us to hear His voice. Uh, he wants us to grow. You know, sometimes, sometimes we think um, that everything's okay, and God's like, no, it's not. Let me help you grow. We don't grow through the great times of life, usually. We grow through the difficult times. It's through those trials where we're in the microwave of growth on high. You know what I'm talking about? Where it is all of a sudden you are just, you're under stress, you're leaning on the Lord, you're shedding some tears. You're crying out to God. Those are growth times. And that's why you need people around you like the church to help you, to help you, to, to encourage you, and people that are not in the difficult circumstances that you are, but people who understand and people who will pray for you and believe that this is just a season that God is pulling you through. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, so we want to rise up in courage in following the Lord. Now, we're going to talk about some keys to success today, okay, keys from Scripture, and, and it's interesting because I don't know what you dream about. You know, I don't know what maybe was your dream as a kid, or, and sometimes we're always trying to decide, you know, is that my dream, God, or is that your dream? Those are important questions to ask. You know, God, is this really something you've placed in my heart, or is this something that I'm just pursuing? And so we've, we've all got to evaluate uh, those questions. But if you had a desire, you know, to be a teacher, you had a desire, oh, bless you, if you desire to be a politician, now would be a good time. Um, but, um, you know, where God has put desires in your heart, and, and you would like to sit down with someone who's lived it, right? An expert in the field and somebody who's been there. Maybe it's a teacher that's been teaching, you know, for 30 years and you have the opportunity to sit down with them. Maybe it's a completely different field, a dentist or a doctor or whatever. Some, something that you would like to sit down and talk with somebody who's been there, who's made the mistakes, and can walk you through those situations. 
We learn a lot from sitting down and, and talking with people that have gone the distance and done things for a long time. And so here we have God's Word that gives us what we need, that shows the good, bad, and the ugly. It shows the, the poor decisions that people make. Aren't you grateful that God's Word shows it all? You know, it, didn't, it doesn't show David just completely perfect, and, and we're all like, we can't live up to, to, to David. He was just amazing. It shows the struggles that David had. It shows the wrong attitudes that David had. It shows the sin that David had. And so to be able to sit down with somebody, we can sit down with God's Word. We can sit down with the Holy Spirit every day and, and get things from God's Word. And so... Um, Joshua 1.9, we've continued to put our finger on this verse. This is my command, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We have God's Word where we can learn what to do and, and even what not to do in circumstances. And the big idea today, we'll, we'll hit this and we'll come back to it, is now is your time. Now is your time. Sometimes we're waiting for things, and sometimes we're, we're kind of, well, you know, I'll get there, and then we've all seen people in our lives that never get there. But there's things right now that the Lord wants to do in and through your life. It's an amazing thing where God continues to prepare you, but He's also using you all at the same time. You know, sometimes we think we have to come to church and be perfect, you know, and, and, and I grew up in that generation that it was all about the look, all about the look, about the look. I don't know. It was all about the look. Smell good, look good, act like everything is good, when really there was such a facade. And over time, that began to crumble. And so we bring all of our mess to the Lord, and He's preparing us, and He's working on us, and then He uses us by His grace. It's an amazing thing that, that God does. We don't have to arrive. He, he uses us in our mess to encourage and to speak truth, to speak life. It's an amazing thing. And so the big idea is now is your time. So here we are. The Israelites have wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Someone say 40 years. I am 43. That is a very long time. And if... <laughs> if you have any little ones, you're ancient, you know. 40? Oh, my goodness. When is your funeral? No. <laughs> So here, every male 20 years old or older had died. Moses had just spent the last month reviewing and renewing God's covenant with the people, with this new generation of Israelites. That's what the book of Deuteronomy is, okay? The book of Deuteronomy really is about a month's time where Moses is reviewing and renewing the covenant with this new generation Because they're getting ready to go into the promised land. But here's the kicker is that Moses doesn't get to go. Moses and Aaron and Miriam all die before, they, before the people get to go into the promised land. And it really is kind of sad to some degree that that had to happen. So God has Moses on the top of Mount Nebo overlooking the promised land. They're looking over to Jericho. Cindy and I had an opportunity to be there in 2005 and be on top of uh, Mount Nebo and, and look down at Jericho. I mean, you literally you see the Jordan River and there's Jericho over there. I mean, um, if you ever get the opportunity to do that, don't hesitate. He's looking at it. Here he's at the age of 120, and God gives him an, an ability to see supernaturally all the way to the Mediterranean Sea. 
which is pretty crazy. But the Lord gives him that supernatural ability to do that. And so here we are in Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. It says, After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Kind of abrupt, isn't it? Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate them from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Someone say continually. Let that sink in. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Lord, thank you for being with us. Lord, thank you that you're with us right now. And Lord, no matter what we're walking through or where we're going, God, you're with us. Open our eyes to your truth this morning. May we walk in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. How can I be a success every day? And let me clarify something. Being a success in God's eyes doesn't necessarily mean you're going to look like a success in man's eyes. It's a very important truth, especially in a culture that doesn't necessarily value God's Word, what He says, or what He wants us to do. But I can tell you, I would much rather be a success in God's eyes than anyone else's eyes. And that is our goal as believers in Jesus Christ, to be faithful to the one who has called us. He's called each one of us. And there's going to be some uncomfortable times when we're standing up for the Lord, when we're standing up for righteousness. There's going to be some people looking at you like you're crazy because you value God's Word and you value what He thinks more than what they think. It's important to kind of make that distinction. So how can I be a success every day, a success in God's eyes is really where we're going. And the first thing is to recognize it is your time. Joshua needed a reality check, just like we've been in a little denial with the McCanns leaving. Needed a reality check. Moses is dead. There was all this preparation that had been taking place in Joshua's life, although Joshua really wasn't necessarily aware of it. He'd been Moses' assistant. He was with Moses. When Moses went up Mount Sinai and received the Ten Commandments, okay, Exodus 20, Deuteronomy 5, you can write those down, look at them later, Joshua was there. Joshua was the one with Caleb that came back with the good report. There was all these things that had happened in Joshua's life that were preparation for him leading the people. It was Joshua's time, but the Lord had to go, let me give you a clue. Moses is dead. Therefore, do this. After the death of Moses, 
the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, he said, Moses, my servant is dead, therefore the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan into the land I am giving them. There was this moment. It's time. We each have a moment as well. You and I have a moment. It is your time too. Sometimes we think, oh, well, that's somebody else's job or that's a professional's job or let's let the pastors do. No, see, look, the pastor's job is to equip the saints for works of service, helping you recognize that it's your time as well. It's your time. Time to turn your life over to God. It's so sweet about this moment of surrender where we're all singing, I surrender all. That's every day. God, I surrender to you. I surrender to what you want to do today. Use me. We have this time where we turn our life over to God, where we believe that Jesus came, where we believe that Jesus paid the price to reconcile us to God. Romans 10.9, Pastor Ben mentioned this last week, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 2 Corinthians 6.2 says, Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. It's time to surrender our lives to the Lord, but additionally, it's time to, dis to discover His plans that He has for you. Joshua needed a moment, and each of us need a moment as well. Will we recognize it's time? It's time for you to lead your husband. It's time for you to lead your wife. It's time for you to lead your kids in the Lord's ways. It's time to step up in your neighborhood. It's time to stand at your job. Today is the day of salvation, not just for us, but for everyone that we come in contact with. Therefore, Moses, he's dead. Therefore, it's now time. And it's interesting how now we are to be dead to ourselves. And he is dead to what I want. God, do whatever you want through me. It's our time. Do you believe it's your time? I mean, let it sink in for a moment. Sometimes we think, oh, well, it's just my time to be in church. It is your time. God has appointed the times and the season and Scripture even says the exact places where you will live. It is your time. How can I be a success every day? Remember God is with you. We all feel alone at times. But the truth is, we're never alone. Joshua 1.5, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. The Lord is with us through every circumstance or situation. I was with some pastors this week, and he was describing his six-year-old son, and his wife had walked past the bedroom, and she'd heard him praying, little six-year-old. And he says, um, Jesus, I really need a miracle here. 
I can't get my pants buttoned. You're either going to have to help me or send someone to me. (laughs) Now, it's precious, right? Little six-year-old saying that. But, interestingly, he knew God was with him. He knew he was not alone, that he could cry out or call out to God, and he would answer. And so, you know, Ben is his name, Ben Rainey, he said his wife kind of peeked around the door and said, you doing all right? <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, I was just praying. You know, and she's like, well, would you like me to help you? Yeah. Guess God answered that prayer. Jesus recognized he was not alone as well. John 16, 32, look, an hour is coming and has come when each of you will be scattered to his own home, and you will leave me alone. He's about ready to be crucified. So look, an hour is coming and has come when each of you will be scattered to his own home and you will leave me alone. Yet, I am not alone because the Father is with me. What an incredible promise for us that the Lord is with us wherever we go. No matter where you are, no matter what you're walking through, I know there's some heavy, heavy things that you're walking through. I know there's relational issues that some of you are walking through. I know that there is health issues that some of you are walking through, and you're never alone. God is with you. And just like Ben's son, call out to him. You can't go anywhere without the Lord. He's with you. How can I be a success every day? Be strong and courageous. How important do you think your attitude is every day? Now, I I know that we go through some tough times, but this is the best day I'm ever going to have until tomorrow. There's someone in here that knows that phrase quite well. How you doing? It's the best day I'm ever going to have until tomorrow. See, it it can sound trite, but the truth is when we recognize that the Lord is with us, we recognize He is listening to us we can be strong and courageous. And it's interesting that if we recognize that, that God is with us all the time, it sure does help us be strong and courageous wherever we go. The message sometimes that we have in our, in our culture is be fearful, be wimpy wherever you go. Be afraid. ISIS is out there. There are truths to danger and there are truths to things. But God has said, do not fear. Do not be afraid. Be strong and courageous. Joshua 1, 6 through 7, be strong and courageous for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give give to them. Be strong and very courageous. God has laid out plans for you to discover, things that He wants you to do, things that He's laid out before you as you're singing, I surrender all, angels are rejoicing in heaven. They're like, yes, you think we're having a party down here sometimes. Angels are rejoicing because... There are people that are turning their lives over to the Lord. Because when we're right there surrendered to to God, that's when God's plans, we're open to them. Our hearts are open. Our ears are listening. God, give us spiritual eyes and spiritual ears 
to see and to hear what you have in store for us, the plans that you have. We can be strong and courageous no matter what's going on. We had a chapel meeting, and some of you would have asked about it, and what happened in that meeting? And uh, it was an interesting meeting. It was a good meeting. They wanted a lot of money. Um, But here's the deal. We didn't waver at all. We were strong and courageous in that meeting, we recognized that there was obstacles financially there, if you're curious, about $41,000 a month. Yeah. So we're going to watch the Lord remove that obstacle. But we didn't, we didn't go, oh, man, oh, man, oh, oh, there's just no way. You know why? We knew what the Lord had already promised. So we're going to watch obstacles fall. We can be strong and courageous. That's on the corporate side. What about you as an individual? God is with you. Let me say it again. God is with you. He has redeemed you. He has plans in front of you. He wants to use you. Be strong and courageous. Don't be arrogant. There's a difference. Be strong and courageous. As we hear God's voice, as we do what He's called us to do, we can be strong and courageous. We don't have to be arrogant. Arrogant is not something God has ever called us to. Please don't ever think He has. It was Deuteronomy 121, as I was driving up the hill about four years ago, I was listening to Scripture And I hit the top of the hill right there as the chapel is right there. Okay, it was literally, I'm listening. I just went to Starbucks, you know. It was about 6.30 in the morning. I'm driving up that hill listening to my Bible reading plan. And I hit the crust of that hill. There's the chapel right there. And here's the verse. Look. He has placed the land in front of you. Go and occupy it. As the Lord, the God of your ancestors has promised you, don't be afraid, don't be discouraged. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, rewind. The Starbucks hadn't even woke me up yet, but God did. Be strong and courageous. It's corporately stuff for us but it's individually for you and your family. Do not be timid. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but He's given you a spirit of love and of power and a sound mind. Second Timothy says that. Rise up. Recognize that we are to be strong and courageous. Recognize that He is with you You want to be a success, be careful to obey God's Word. Be careful to obey God's Word. Have you ever not followed the instructions? Men? Some ladies too, but I can, I'm a guy so I can pick on us a little bit. We didn't read the instructions carefully. Something doesn't look right with that. Is that entertainment center supposed to look like that? thought it was supposed to be a square. (laughs) 
I can think about July 4th. My parents used to run a fireworks stand. Every kid's dream back in the day when we could blow stuff up. We could blow mailboxes up. We could blow army men up. You kids now are so deprived. (laughs) You're not supposed to hang on to the fireworks and let them explode in your hands. I remember having my hand in a mud puddle because it does rain in July in Seattle and 10 other months of the year. I have my hand in there because I didn't follow the instructions. You're not supposed to throw the jumping jacks. You're supposed to light them on the ground. That way your neighbor's holly bush doesn't start on fire and the fire department come. And the neighbors are panicking because there's a car parked in front of it. We are to be careful to follow the instructions. Joshua 1, 7 Halfway through verse 7, it says, Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. It's so important for us to to get this. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study the book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be sure to obey everything, someone say everything, written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. We are to study and to meditate on Scripture. Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3 says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with mockers, But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. Studying and meditating Scripture is not just reading it. Can I help us for a second? Because sometimes we're patting ourselves on the back because we read a portion of Scripture. Woohoo! Whole Bible in a year. Woohoo! Which is good. But reading is not studying. Studying, meditating. There's a book, Celebration of Discipline, and talking about the spiritual disciplines and the steps to study, repetition, concentration, comprehension, and then reflection. How does this apply to my life today? Study this book of the law. Meditate on it day and night. Be careful to obey God's Word. And Scripture says, then you will be successful in all you do. Do you want to be a success? then be careful and study, meditate. It's not just reading. God wants to take us to new places in Him. What's the big idea? Now is your time. Now is is your time. You were made for this time. Moses was made for his time. Joshua was made for his time. Jeremiah was made for his time. The Lord has made you for his time in this generation. John the Baptist was made for his time. He was to prepare the way of the Lord. He was to prepare the way of Jesus. He must become greater, John said, talking about Jesus. 
I must become less and less. John the Baptist served God in his time. God is calling you and me to serve him in his time, which makes this your time. Your time to be faithful. Your time to be courageous, to be strong. It's your time. Every one of us has a dash. We're going to have a dash. Everyone in here knows where I'm going. And all the little kids that heard I was 43, I don't think I'm dying tomorrow anyway. We have a dash. There's a time we're born and a time we die. And we have this dash in the middle. When you're walking through cemeteries, it's kind of sobering, isn't it? When all of life is the dash. Walking through Arlington Cemetery, seeing the sacrifices that have been made. Someone's life, a dash. God has called you to be strong and courageous to lead when others don't, to shine, to give, to encourage, to stand up for righteousness. Students, you can stand up for righteousness at your school. This is your time. God, give us a vision for our family. God, give us a vision for our school. God, help us to be the generation that stands up for you. Help us live for you, God. It's our time to shine. It's our time, church, to forgive. To move on, to let things go. It's time to lead others, to do what's right, to hope and to trust. God has plans for your time. Don't go to sleep. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Do you believe it? Right now, some, some in this room are like, I, I can't do anything. Oh, rise up. Pastor Andy, you have no idea what I'm walking through right now. Rise up. God has appointed the times. Everything's not going to be perfect in your life. There's going to be obstacles. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For God is with you wherever you go. Rise up. It's your time. Because it's God's time. And He's set. He's appointed the times. He's set things just as He wants. It's your time. It's the worship band comes. God is going to call you to do things that are going to be difficult at times. There's going to be things that he asks you to do. I'm going to use the McCann's as an example again. Not that they're perfect. None of us in here are. But here God has brought something together. Where... Family can't take care. They're not in a place or a position to take care. And Chris and Steph said, this is our time.
God calls us to do difficult things. He calls us to stand up for truth in a world that doesn't want it. He calls us to step in and lead family. Some of you are going to be called to foster kids. There was a panic in a few of you. <laughs> Some it's going to go to adoption. The greatest gift. A family following after the Lord and God calls you. to be strong and courageous because it's your time. It's God's time. So it's your time. Heavenly Father, you have your finger on every one of us today. Your Holy Spirit crafts, takes your word and applies it to our lives with absolute perfection. And God, you're speaking in this room today. Lord, help your church recognize Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of discovery, the day of surrendering to your plans and your purposes, God, the things that you want to do. Lord, help us together to have courage. Help us to be strong and courageous. Help us to step into all that you have in store. No matter what the obstacles are in the way, God, there's always obstacles. But Lord, you build our trust as you begin to pick off every obstacle as we say yes to you. Help us to stand strong today. Maybe today you're... You just want to visually say, God, I'm open to whatever you want to do with my life. We've had this moment of surrender, and I know many of you have today. But maybe you visually are saying today, God, I'm open to whatever you want to do. Lord Jesus, use my life. I'm open to whatever you want to do, and you specifically today, the Lord is talking to you about something in particular, and you just stand to your feet where you're at. God is calling you to something specific. Who else? It's your time. God, I'm open to whatever you want to do. Wherever you're asking me to go, whatever you want me to say, I'm open to that. Who else today? You just stand. God has something specific. God, we thank you. We thank you today for your voice. And Lord, I pray that you would confirm your will to each person, Lord, to each person today, God, that recognizes there is something, Lord, that you are calling them to this time. Help them to be strong and courageous today. Open their eyes and their ears. Illuminate your word, God. 
We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to accomplish. As they say yes to you, may there be great reports, God, great testimonies of what you've done because of what they've said today. We thank you for this. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Seems appropriate to surrender. Can you lead us with that? I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I God is good. His love endures forever. Sometimes you hear something for you to pass on. Have you ever heard something and you just held on to it and you knew it was of God, but it wasn't necessarily for you. It was for someone else. There are 500,000 orphans in America today. There are one million churches 500,000 orphans, 1 million churches. Which means if one in every two church did what the Bible said and took care of the widows and the orphans, the problem would be solved. You hear what I'm saying? I know it's offering time, and that's kind of a big check to put in the offering. But I believe God is calling us to do great things, greater than ourselves, to give more than we've ever given. And for some of us, that may be adopting, that may be foster care, that may be whatever it is in your context. But I believe God gives us dreams that scare us, and that's when we have to hold on to that truth. Be strong and very courageous. God wouldn't call you to do something that you weren't a little scared to do because then it wouldn't be greater than yourself. I'm sure Moses was scared to death. I'm sure Joshua was scared very fearful. I'm sure David, when he looked down at that giant named Goliath, probably had a little bit of his flesh that was saying, don't do it, dude. He's going to kill you. And I believe here today, there's some fear in our hearts that God's saying, don't be afraid. Do not be discouraged. I've gone before you. I created you to do this. This is your destiny. This is your purpose. Now go and walk in it. What a challenging word. What a great word. God is mighty. And he's mighty to save. Amen. The ushers are coming down the aisles. They have these offering buckets because we believe God's going to make it rain. You know what I'm saying? He's going to make it rain in in the church. He's going to make it rain in your lives. Malachi 3. Now, some of you are going to hear this for the very first time, and others of you are going to be reminded that this is in the Bible. Either way, it's a good thing. Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. 
It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. How many of you know we love to eat food at South County Church, right? There will be enough food in my temple. You guys go through a lot of food. I'm just saying. I mean, we go through a lot of food. If you do, says the Lord of Heaven's army, get this, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I'll pour out a blessing so great, a blessing so abundant, so massive, that you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Your crops will be abundant, for I will guard them from insects and disease. Oh, the job market's low? Don't worry, God's got you covered. You know, the economy's down? Don't worry, God has got you covered. Do you hear what his word says? It says, I will guard against insects. I will guard against disease. It says, your grapes will not fall to the, from the vine before they are ripe. No matter where you're at, no matter what you're going through, God is faithful. And he's got your blessing waiting. Do you believe it? You should believe it because that's God's word. That's not Ben's opinion. You know, and that's worth standing on. Father, we love you. God, we bless your holy name today in this place. Lord, your word is clear that when we are faithful with our tithes and offerings, God, that you will pour out a blessing so big that we can't even contain it. Lord, I pray that you would act on that word today in this place. And for those that need a financial breakthrough, a miracle, a job from you, Lord, that you would provide it. God, we trust you and we look to you. We love you. We praise you. We adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. So there's another similarity between Pastor Andy and I. Are you ready to hear this? We're both from Washington State. We both had the great fireworks. We both set our neighbors' houses on fire. Mine wasn't a bush. Mine was a bottle rocket that landed on the top of the house. And, yeah, you can imagine. But the fire department didn't show up, mostly because my dad was the chief of police, and we had the fire out before uh, any real problems. And, and Yeah. All right, that's not what I'm up here to tell you. I'm up here to tell you right after this service, we have a meeting for the Easter egg outreach, all right? Who's going to be there? Huh? Yeah, look, oh, look at all those hands. So we're going to meet right here down front. Also, if you can't be there, just let us know you want to help out, and we'll make sure to plug you in. Are you ready for a great week? I'm going to try that again. Are you ready for a great week? All right, stand to your feet. Let's pray. Lord, we bless your holy name. God, we thank you for everything you've done all you're going to do. Lord, when the enemy tries to scare us, we know you're with us. You've gone before us, and we claim victory in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. By your grace I'm saved, you have brought me back with the riches of your amazing grace and relentless love. I made a life forever with you, life forever. By your grace I'm saved, by your grace I'm saved. been erased I'll never be the same my sin has been erased I'll never be the same you brought me back with the riches of your amazing grace and relentless love I made a life for with you, life forever. By your grace, I'm saved. By your grace, I'm
I've lived Hot on the wire Hand in the fire for so long You show me better A new kind of love Is ever the one I, I want I'm lifting you higher, higher There's nothing that I'd rather do A sweet elevation of praises There's no one I love more than you I never knew a love like this before The kind of love that I cannot find on my own I've seen the world but I've never been so sure I want your heart God, I just want to be where you are uh, 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 uh. Where you are I just want to be where you are uh, 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 uh. Where you are I just want to be your love Like nothing I've seen My wildest of dreams don't come close I've never known better than living like this. I cannot resist you, Lord. I'm lifting you higher, higher. There's nothing that I'd rather do. A sweet elevation of praises. There's no one I love more than you. I never knew a love like this before. The kind of love that I cannot find on my own I've seen the world but I've never been so sure I want your heart God, I just want to be where you are uh, 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 uh. Where you are I just want to be where you are uh, 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 uh. Where you are I just want to be where you are